So recently we tested the rust effect water soluble paint from Dirty Down, but can you improve on awesome? Well, today I have seven top tips for you that will help you to get the most out of this stuff and help you to create some amazingly realistic effects really, really easily. So you ready? Let's go. Our test pieces today are gonna to be some more of that terrain from the Kill Team Octarius box set. Now I've used these because they're nice and big and it's easy to see but you can use these techniques for whatever surface you're trying to paint. Now I've primed these in a black Mecha primer from Vallejo. Now this dirty down rust paint, you'll get the best result from it if it's on top of another color, rather than working straight off the black primer. So therefore I've put some really simple base colors down just to give something for us to work off. So when you're working with this rust paint from dirty down, make sure the bottle is warm, as well as the surface you're gonna put it on. If it's warm, it'll help that chemical reaction. If it's cold, it won't do much at all. There is a ball bearing inside it, but you might need to get a stirrer and get right down to the bottom to get all the goop up and give it a really good stir. So technique or tip number one. Now this one is about using multiple coats. So apply it, whether it be by brushing it on or stippling it on, but allow it to fully dry. This can take about five minutes and then put another coat on. But when you put the second coat on, make it slightly more blotchy. So don't cover the entire area again. So put more on some areas and a lot less on others. And it will give you a really patchy effect. So as you know, using any water at all will have a massive effect on the outcome of using this stuff. So on this one, I'm gonna get a little bit of kitchen towel, twist it up to make it like a pad, and then slightly dampen it, not wet, slightly dampen it, and then gently dab it onto the surface and then leave it to dry. Now this rust effect paint will have a big difference in outcome depending on the amount of solution that you put on. Tip three is absolutely awesome if you want a really dark and textured effect. Now this stuff will dry out quite quickly, so you don't want to pour it out anywhere, but what you can do is get a generous amount on a paintbrush, for example, put it onto a plate or into a cup, and leave it for a couple of minutes. Now this will start to go off, it will start to dry out and it will start to become thicker. Now the thicker it is, the darker effect you're gonna get. So if you leave it for a little while and then apply it, you are condensing that color, condensing that pigment into a really nice textured amount which you then apply to the model. Okay, tip four is similar to what we did before with the kitchen towel, but you're using the kitchen towel dry. You pour it onto, onto a dry cloth or tissue and then dab it onto the surface. This will give it a nice textured and mottly effect, but then make sure you let it completely dry. Tip number five, this is ideal for larger surfaces. You'll see why in a minute. Now, first of all, brush on the dirty down rust effect paint to where you want it to be. And then what you do is you want to randomly flick some water onto it. Now you could use an old toothbrush, for example, or as I am here, using the tip of a paintbrush. All you're doing is dipping it in the water and using the brush to flick that paint onto the surface you applied with the dirty down paint. Now tip number six, I have not seen this method used in this way by anybody else. So all I'm gonna do is use some cling film or kitchen wrap or whatever it's called wherever you are in the world. So first of all, you paint a generous amount of dirty down rust over the surface you want to do. And then you get your cling film and apply it smoothly over the top you've just painted and then kind of scrunch it up and wriggle it around and then carefully peel the cling film off. Then do not touch it, let it dry. So before we move on to the seventh and final tip, let's look at what we've got so far. So as we look back at these, let me know what you think down in the comments. Now to my eye, this looks really interesting. So this one is where we put on the multiple layers. So we put it on first of all, let it dry, then put another layer on in a slightly more blotchy pattern, let it dry. And you could do it again if you wanted to. Now to me, this looks like really heavily corroded metal rather than surface rust, if you know what I mean. And this is where we dabbed it on. And you notice how it's, it is quite blotchy. And I think if you put in another coat of this, it would enhance that effect as well. Now you can also get this sort of effect by stippling it on with a, a really old splayed brush. But this is a great way to get some of that light surface rust and add a little bit of texture into it as well. Now this wheel hub is where we use that condensed paint, where we let it dry first a little bit before we put it on. So as you can see, the effect is a lot darker, 
but it has that really nice texture of corroded metal as well. Now on this hatch, I wanted to have a bit of a play with this. I wanted to see how this stuff reacts when using a smaller, more subtle effects. So whilst it looks okay, I think it would look even better if we mixed it up with some traditional techniques for painting chips and rust effects. But we can look at that later. And this one works quite nicely because it gives all those different colors coming through. But point to note, if you're going for a really realistic effect, then this is probably better used for more flatter surfaces. So for example, on the corrugated iron piece, it's quite new paint in the recesses and then that mottly speckly paint on the raised areas. So painting surfaces like that may take a little bit more thought. Now, one key thing to remember about this technique is scale. If you flick large water droplets, you'll get a large speckling, which may look out of place on a small scale. So on a smaller scale, use a smaller spray. This is the one we had the fun with the cling film. I really enjoy this method. It's really simple, but it is very, very effective as well. Now this one will work best when you're on larger, flatter surfaces rather than smaller surfaces. Although you could try it on a smaller surface and just play with it a little bit. Have a go, and then let me know how you get on. Right, so finally, on to tip seven. Now this is probably the biggest tip you can get if you're trying to get the best out of this dirty down rust effect to get a really realistic result, is to use a multimedia approach. Now what I mean by this, it can be really easy when you find something like this to rely on it to give you the result you need, rather than thinking about it as a tool in your toolbox to be used alongside other things to get the best result for the overall model. And that's the approach I use to get this really weather-beaten scrap heat pile effect. Now I've used about four or five other techniques and bits of kit to get this effect. So if you want to learn more about the techniques and the bits of kit that you can use in your toolbox to get these effects, after hitting the like button for this video, you've got to check out this video right here.